I'm Holly Coates. I'm the regional director for the South and West region, and that is our Farmville, Lynchburg, and South Hill offices. I have been in this field for 19 years, my entire career actually with the agency, 19 years. What I love most about UMFS, aside from its people, is its longevity. I love how long we have been an organization and in business. I love what the name stands for, and I love being in the community, and when you tell someone you work for a UMFS, they stop and they pay attention. They want to talk with you more about that, or they've heard of us and want to know more about what we do. I love that the people live the values of the organization. Um, they're not just values that live on a wall. They're values that live within the staff and then the staff live those values. The services we have in the Southwest region um, are treatment foster care program. We also offer kinship services which includes home study, training, and connecting and aftercare services. We have family stabilization services, comprehensive case coordination services, therapeutic and supervised visitation, and also Project Life in our Lynchburg office. The staff in the South and West region work across regions. Most of them are not assigned to one office or the other. We have 15 full slash part-time staff that work within the region. And I think one of the unique things about them is that at this point, all of them are either master's level or at least three years in their field or within the agency, and many are, are more than that. One of the most unique things about them is their desire to learn and grow. They are very accepting of feedback. They seek out knowledge. They seek out um, opportunities to grow. And over time, they learn just within the culture of our offices to seek out opportunities to go outside of their comfort zones and to do things that they've never done before to allow them to grow professionally and personally, but also to grow us and grow our region. All of our clinical staff are trained in collaborative problem solving. We also have additional staff who are trained in Tier 2. We have staff who are up and coming to be regional experts in the process. Um, all of the clinical staff use this model within our their cases and within the families, and we are starting to create some family development models and approaches to working with families that also utilize the model to help support families and keep kids in placements and prevent disruptions. The staff consistently say that the most gratifying piece of their work and the thing that has them coming back every day is seeing the results of what they are doing in what happens with a child. So when they see a child or a family are able to implement the thing that they gave them or they see a child graduate high school or show them a, a great report card or an award on a piece of art or a successful you know, soccer game, just being able to see those kids achieve those daily successes that are often taken for granted is the greatest reward that the staff share with me. What makes the South and West offices unique are one, the fact that we are three offices covering an incredibly large geographic area, and we do that with a centralized staff. All of our staff work in all three of those offices um, for the most part, and we share a lot of essential personnel. What makes us even more unique is our location and geographic area. We have very limited access and services available to support very high level kids. So our staff have to be incredibly resourceful in meeting extreme needs and meeting needs for services that may be an hour to an hour and a half or two hours away at times. So figuring out ways to bring those services to our clients in a way that works for them and also meets that need. 35% of the children in our treatment foster care program are level three, which means they are the more acute children. They do have the higher level of need. So for us to be so successful in serving those needs with limited resources, I feel like is very unique to our region. So our permanency rate last year, the previous year and on target currently is 74%, so we're really proud of that. That means that 74% of the kids that we serve are either going to an adoptive home, to a relative, or back to their birth family. And it also means that our disruption rate is lower because the kids that leave our program are going to a permanent home and not to another setting or to a higher level of care for the most part. Our foster parent satisfaction rate for the last two years has been at 96%, which is 
really high considering the level of the work that they do and the stress of the work that they do. So it just means that our staff are doing a tremendous job in supporting our families and making sure that they have what they need. Our child satisfaction rate is also extremely high. The kids are, when we survey them, are very happy with their services. They know their worker, they know how to get in touch with me, and they know how to articulate their needs to their staff. The things that we hear the most from our families are things like, you, you guys were there when I needed you. I called and you answered the phone. I called and you came. And most importantly, I called and you listened. So many times when the phone rings, there's not necessarily an action needed from a parent. They just need you to listen. So we often hear how much that is valued. And as much as it may take time to spend you know, 30 or 40 minutes on the phone with a foster parent, ultimately it has the greatest impact because that's what that family needs to to get that extra piece of support to be able to help them to help that child. Our customers should choose to work with us for a couple of reasons. One is we are relentless in solving problems and that's one of our values, relentlessly pursuing solutions. There has not been a problem yet that we have either not solved or given everything that we could to solve it. And that involves a lot of creativity, a lot of thinking outside of the box, a lot of pooling resources, but we don't just give up. Um, we make it work in whatever way possible and usually we're successful in you know, putting that together. The other reason is we are open to feedback. Many of our customers give us tough feedback or they give us feedback or they ask questions that make us think and we are always open to that growth, always open to moving that needle and always open, open to hearing what we can do better and many of those conversations lead us to sparks to allow those customers to have the opportunity to have a potential say in what our growth pattern looks like or what our next step is because of something they've shared with us to allow us to know, you know, hey, you, know, you can grow here.